What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Albion Online video. In this video, I'm gonna show you the ultimate guide to random dungeons in Albion Online. Random dungeons are the best new way to level up your armor pieces in a PvE way. So if you're into PvE, you're into doing dungeons, then random dungeons are the perfect thing for you to level up your armor pieces. Before we get started, I do want to say that I'm currently giving away a giant horse. There will be a link in the description just click on the link you can enter the giveaway there just follow the steps and you'll be prompted to enter the giveaway i'm going to be announcing the winner on my discord server about in a week and a half so if you want to enter for the giveaway make sure you click the link below so what are random dungeons random dungeons are dungeons that randomly spawn around the world and they're also randomly generated once you enter them these dungeons are intended for groups of four to six players and they also hold a bunch of full and valuable resources as well as very dangerous enemies you can find these dungeons from the tier 4 and above zones so you cannot find them in tier 3 or below these dungeons are also not visible on the map so if you go into a zone and you open the map they won't be visible in the map you actually have to walk around and try finding one by just going in your horse and just walking around through the entire zone so they're not visible in the map and they have to be in a tier 4 zone or higher their challenges and rewards match the tier of the zone they are found in so if you are in a tier 5 dungeon you will most likely get tier 5 mobs and tier 4 five loot from those chests yes you can find some lower tier you can find some probably some tier four and probably some even tier six rewards in a tier five map or tier five dungeon but in general the tier zone you're in indicates what tier of the mobs as well as what tier of the loot you're going to be getting each dungeon that spawns usually lasts a limited amount of time before it despawns. Also, any player can access and be able to discover a dungeon. So a tier 1 person can just be walking around in the world and find a tier 5 dungeon. Now for some visual stuff, there's actually five types of hidden entrances or doors that you get to see out in the world once you stumble upon a random dungeon. These five entrances determine what kind of mob faction you're going to be entering for that dungeon. So these are the five. We got the portal, and the portal will spawn a random mob, a random mob faction, and a random dungeon. Then we got the Morgana door. Then we got the Hedrick slash Mind door. We got the Undead door as well as the Keeper door. These are the five different entrances you're going to be finding out in the world. So if you see one of these entrances, this means this is going to be a random dungeon. Again, the portal, the portal entrance is kind of a random thing. So if you go in there, you might get a Hedrick or you might get a Morgana. It's just a random portal that takes you to a random mob faction dungeon. Another visual tip, once you encounter an entrance to a dungeon, you will notice there will be some torches lit up. Once you enter the dungeon and once you exit the dungeon, you will also notice that those torches are no longer lit up. This will help indicate that you have already been inside that dungeon. This does not indicate if you're another player, if you're just a player around the world, this does not indicate if there's a player inside that dungeon. It only indicates to the person who has entered that dungeon. So if I'm entering a dungeon and I come out, only I will see those torches turn off. Not a random player that comes along and sees that there's some torches lit off. They will see torches lit on if they have not entered the dungeon. So I've shared you how you can find these dungeons out in the world. But what if you want to spawn a dungeon for yourself? There's actually an item that you can get and obtain that will spawn a random dungeon out in the world just for you. This item is called the dungeon map or the random dungeon map. And there are two ways you can obtain this item. The first way is from a mob drop. So you can get it anytime you kill a mob. There might be a chance this mob drops a random dungeon map and you can do random activities you can do something like hell gates you can even get maps from random dungeons that you're doing out in the world but that is the first way you can get these maps the second way is if you just go into the marketplace and you buy that map from another player who's trying to sell that map you can probably find tier 4 all the way to tier 8 maps in the marketplace but does cost a little bit of silver so if you are doing a group activity if you have a bunch of friends you might want to pitch in a bunch of silver 
and pile your silver together uh, to purchase these maps. So these are the two ways to get these maps. Now I'm going to share with you how these maps actually work and all you need to know to activate this map and how to use these maps. I want to show with you how these dungeon maps actually work. I actually opened one already, so I went in my inventory, I clicked on the map, then I clicked on use. What this did, this prompted an indicator right here, this blue indicator, showing to me where that dungeon just spawned, right here. I'm currently right here, this red indicator indicates where you are, and the blue one right here indicates where that dungeon just spawned. So what I have to do is I have to walk all the way to that location, go in there, and I can begin doing my random dungeon. Now, to actually use these maps, you have to be near near the same tier territory as that map that you just have or you just bought. So I use a tier 5 dungeon map. That means I have to be near a tier 5 zone so I can use that map so that tier 5 dungeon will spawn in that location. So since I was in Craigmore, I'm only one, well technically two zones if you count the underway. I'm two zones away from Karen Kamein right here, that tier 5 zone. That means I was able to spawn a tier 5 dungeon because I'm near the tier 5 zone. You have to be around a 5 zone radius. So uh, if I can probably spawn a tier 5, uh, probably here in, in this territory as well, and I could have probably spawned one here, and possibly if I had a tier 4, I would probably have spawned it here. So it has to be like a 5 zone radius around you, and you have to be near that tier of territory to spawn it. So if I'm in the black zones, and I'm in a really high tier, and I'm trying to do a low tier map, I can't do that. I'll just tell you, hey, you can't. You have to go find a location where you can spawn the map. So I'm going to head to the location of that dungeon and I'll show you guys how it looks and how you can actually see where that dungeon actually spawned. So we made it here to the dungeon that we spawned. Before we go in, I do want to talk about some things. First, once you use your map, as soon as you click on the use button on your map, what this is going to happen is there's going to be a 15 minute window where your dungeon, wherever it's spawned in the world, it's not visible by other players. So if I just use my map and I'm a random player, I'm just, you know, kind of mining ore here, I actually can't see this dungeon for the first 15 minutes that you use that map. So I, it's, it's not visible by other players. Now, there's a quick thing about that as you get closer to your dungeon there's a small radius around your dungeon and as you get closer to that radius once you actually enter the radius of the dungeon that dungeon will become visible by every player so if i'm here i'm very close to my dungeon and there's a random player for example i just spawned this dungeon and i made it but that guy right here can see my dungeon because i'm pretty close to my dungeon so it's a very important thing you guys need to understand that yes you do have a 15 minute window where nobody can see your dungeon but once you get closer and closer to your dungeon people will start being able to see your dungeon so that's a quick thing I have to let you guys know now what is the incentive to buy a map instead of just finding one randomly there's actually a small incentive that you need to know if you buy a map the mobs and the loot are stronger because you purchased that random dungeon. You purchased the rights to go into that dungeon. So there is actually a percentage of how stronger the mobs are. And I'm going to share that with you guys right now. If you buy a flat tier dungeon, so a flat 4 or flat 5 dungeon, the mobs are actually 16% stronger. If you buy a 4.1 or the first enchantment, the uncommon enchantment, the mobs are actually 36% stronger. If you buy a 4.2 or a second enchantment, that also includes 5.2, 6.2, uh, aka the rare enchantment, the mobs are 58% stronger. Now, if you buy a 4.3 or the third enchantment, the 0.3, the exceptional enchantment, the mobs are 84% stronger. So if you do buy an enchanted map, so a 4.2, 4.3, there's actually an incentive to go out and do those maps, do those dungeons that way, because the mobs are stronger and since the mobs are stronger you'll be getting better loot so a 4.3 map is actually as hard probably as a tier 6 map probably maybe a little bit lower maybe like a 5.2 map around there a 4.3 because the mobs are 86 sorry 84 percent stronger once they're the th third enchantments the exceptional enchantments this goes all the way from tier 4 maps to tier 8 maps so a tier 8.3 uh, map will have 84% stronger than just the flat 8 tier 
so it's very important for you guys to understand that if you do buy maps there is an incentive because the mobs are stronger and you also get better loot uh that's just a little way they balance the game because you are spending silver to get these maps these private dungeons now i know i just said private dungeons but they aren't really once you enter the dungeon and there's a you know if your group enters the dungeon any other group can actually enter that dungeon as well it only closes after a certain amount of time if you know nobody is in there but if you are inside that dungeon that kind of just uh expands the life span of that dungeon so usually the dungeon spawns and it usually lasts for maybe 10 minutes or so then it just despawns but if you are in the dungeon that just kind of expands the lifespan of that dungeon so if you're about to finish a dungeon there's a chance that people or random people outside the dungeon can come in and this is called dungeon diving and this is another activity that a lot of guilds and a lot of people actually like partaking in this game they're called dungeon divers what they do is they go out in the world usually around in black zones or in red zones and they dive dungeons because it could be pvp there could be pvp action and i'll talk about pvp action inside dungeons uh but they they dive in hoping there's a group there and if they find a group they want to kill them they want to battle them they want to take their loot and then finish the dungeon uh and just take all the resources as well as the dead people all of the uh dead people the people they killed all the resources so there is an activity called dungeon diving and i'll talk about pvp just in a bit but you gotta make sure that these dungeons aren't necessarily fully private not something you just like queue up and nobody can enter them once you enter the dungeon there could be people outside the dungeon waiting for you to enter it so they can dive, you know dungeon dive you uh and there's some strategies to dungeon dive there's also some strategies you can do to uh, kind of negate the dungeon divers so what do you mean about pvp in random dungeons random dungeons are supposed to be pve you go there to kill mobs and to level up your armor what do you mean that you need to be aware for pvp dungeon divers this is something a lot of new players don't understand and they don't get and it's something very important once you start leveling up into higher tier random dungeons depending on what zone you're in will determine the pvp factor for that dungeon so if i'm doing a random dungeon in a blue zone or a yellow zone people who enter that dungeon they can't pvp well actually in blue zones they can't pvp but if they're in a yellow zone and they tag up and they enter then they can pvp uh, as well as for red zones so if you're doing a random dungeon in a red zone yes you can enter it and you can do that random dungeon and if someone enters that it's not flagged from that zone then you can't pvp there's no battle because he's not flagged but if someone from a red zone enters your dungeon and he's flagged up he can come in there and kill you for your loot you can't kill people in tier 4 aka blue dungeons because there's no pvp in that zone so depending on what zone you're in will determine if you can pvp in a random dungeon if you are in a black zone and you're doing a black zone random dungeon this will mean that anybody who enters it can pvp in that random dungeon if you are doing a random dungeon in a blue zone anybody can enter a random dungeon but you guys cannot pvp it's a blue zone you can't pvp in a blue zone if you're in a yellow zone they can enter and if they're not flagged up they can't pvp as well as red zones if they enter and they're not flagged up then they cannot pvp so you have to keep that in mind depending on what zone you're in so for example uh for the random dungeon that i'm doing right now it's in a yellow zone so yes people can enter yes people can flag up but if they kill me since it's a yellow zone they can't you know my my loot won't drop that there's no reason to dungeon dive in yellow territories because you can kill me but you can't i really don't lose anything you guys don't get any loot for that so again depending on the zone you're in will determine if you can pvp on a random dungeon so now that we have talked about all of the information about random dungeons let's actually go into the practical side of doing them these random dungeons are randomly generated from the inside so once you enter the dungeon it'll randomly generate all of the areas all of the little rooms or whatever you might once in a while come around like a similar room if you're doing a lot of random dungeons they might be similar but in general they are random so the rooms are different the locations are different one random dungeon you might go to the right one to the left and it's all kind of generated 
Also, these dungeons have something called floors. Once you clear a floor, you'll be prompted to go into the next floor, and there is a max of five floors. As you go down the floor, you'll be clearing out enemies, and you'll be able to get some chests, uh, some just dungeon chests, so you can get some loot. The most impressive and the most like rare thing you can find in a random dungeon is if you're able to get to the fifth floor. The fifth floor is usually where you're going to find the most amount of loot, and to to this date, I've only gone to the fifth floor about twice. They're very rare, and if you do find yourself in the fifth floor, you're gonna be in a little bit, a little bit of a challenge. But if you do complete that fifth floor, you will get a lot of loot and a lot of better loot for doing that fifth floor. Again, it's randomly generated. So once you enter the dungeon, you might get a dungeon that's two floors. You might get a dungeon that's three floors or four floors. And hopefully you guys get lucky with that fifth floor dungeon. Again, the loot that you get will depend on the tier of the dungeon you're doing. So if you're doing a tier 5 dungeon, expect to get tier 5 loot, possibly some tier 6, and possibly some tier 4 loot. Once you kill some mobs, you might also get little bags that drop in the floor. If you pick up these bags, they'll also drop some loot. Usually they drop some rooms, some souls, or some relics, and they usually drop from between that tier. So if you're doing a tier five zone, they usually drop tier five runes, but you can also get lucky and get some tier six and possibly even some tier seven runes. Uh, but don't expect to get some higher tier like runes and relics if you're doing a lower tier random dungeon usually the dungeon the tier dungeon you're doing will determine everything the, the difficulty and the loot if you're doing an enchantment dungeon so like a 5.2 you get more loot and you will get well not more loot you get higher loot because you're doing that 4.2 dungeon with that extra difficulty that i've talked about before so the loot will depend on the tier of dungeon that you are currently doing so why should you try doing some random dungeons in Albion Online? Currently, random dungeons, in my opinion, are the best way to level up and get fame in this game in a PvE fashion. You could do something like Hellgates, and Hellgates are also up there if you're doing a PvP activity, uh, slash PvE if you count the Hellgate monsters and stuff like that, but usually, if you are new to the game, or if you're trying to level up, you want to do random dungeons because they give the most amount of fame in a PvE activity. They give more than just the regular dungeons. They give more if you go out there in the world and just kill the random mobs. If you want to level up, especially if you want a power level between tier 4 all the way to tier 6, possibly tier 7, you want to be doing random dungeons. Once you start getting that tier 7, that tier 8, you might want to do something like Hellgates and then mix in some random dungeons between here and there. But usually, you want to be doing random dungeons once you want, when you want a power level and when you want to level your character and when you want to level all of your armor pieces. It's the best fa like fame method out there currently. Before the last update, the Oberon update, there weren't any random dungeons. And trust me, it was actually so difficult to do uh, a you know effective fame farming method. You you're, you're supposed to go into the regular dungeons that you find in the world. Uh, and that was littered with PvP, gankers, and such. So the random dungeons are a new thing. It's actually pretty new. It's only been here for around like three months. And they're a new thing. And they're the best way for you to get fame in this game and to level up your armor pieces. With that being said, that concludes my video. That concludes my ultimate random dungeons guide. Hopefully you guys learned something from this entire video. Hopefully there was a lot of information for you guys to take away. And hopefully you guys are out there and start doing some random dungeons. Again, it is the best way you can get fame in this game currently uh, for, you know, early to mid tier. And yeah, so I really hope you guys enjoy. If you guys want to join my Giant Horse giveaway, there will be a link in the description to enter that. And yeah, guys, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. And I will see you guys later on my next video. Peace.